What's up everybody, welcome to Podcast Now, I'm Alex. In this video I'm going to talk about if Dragon Age 4 is going to be shown at EA Play Live uh, this upcoming Thursday. So we're getting ever so close to this. I've made a couple videos over the past few days, you know, talking about Battlefield, talking about Sims. Now I want to talk about Dragon Age, trying to go through as many EA properties, uh, you know, honestly as I possibly can. Try and discuss basically the state of the property and also if they're going to be shown, you know, announced, re-announced, whatever, at EA Play Live. So again, that's this Thursday. We're going to have loads of videos talking about whatever we see both Thursday and throughout uh, the weekend too like Friday through Sunday lots of videos on this channel on whatever EA shows so if you guys like that stuff make sure you're subscribed make sure you have that bell icon turned on and also uh, check out our discord server I want to quickly promote that it'll be in a link in the description below we're getting very very close to 500 members there uh, it's a very very fastly growing uh, community they're doing a lot of different things there's movie nights there's gaming nights there's a lot of really fun things with the community over there lots of different things to talk about uh, at as well. So if you guys have not yet joined and you want to, again, it'll be in the description below. Now, when it comes to Dragon Age, uh, I mean, I'm very, very excited. We've heard kind of conflicting and kind of worrisome things about Dragon Age, right? Uh, with the state of Bioware in general, Dragon Age 4 is really that franchise that, okay, well, you know, Mass Effect Andromeda didn't go over so well. And then, obviously, Anthem was not the greatest game of all time. Uh, and then with Dragon Age, it was like, please don't harm the last, you know, franchise that's still standing already. Because, obviously, there's a lot of franchises that, that have kind of been retired from them, uh, but don't ruin that one, right? Mainly Bioware franchises, right? So it's like, don't ruin Dragon Age 4, and uh, you know, I want to hope for the best. In fact, I do. I always hope for the best for any game, any system. It honestly doesn't matter. Uh, I'm, I'm really a fan of all things gaming, so I don't want anything to be bad. Honestly, I never do. So if anybody ever tells you that, uh, it's not true. With Dragon Age, I want the same thing. I love Dragon Age Inquisition. I, actually, I have played them ever since Dragon Age uh, 1, but Inquisition was that first first one I truly jumped in and had an absolute blast playing so I'm hoping for the best with four it hasn't from what we've heard from like the inside which again you can believe you cannot believe totally up to you but from what we have heard they have had some troubles there but we've heard that Dragon Age 4 has actually had quite a hard time and really the rumors for that have started popping up when that when it came to Anthem when the whole you know everything kind of came out about Anthem one of the things that we've heard about Bioware in general was that Dragon Age isn't doing so well either so Dragon Age to me now again I've made a video on actually on my second channel I made a video on a Mass Effect remaster because I think that's very possible that we get that this Thursday on this channel of the this past week I talked about Battlefield 6 I talked about Sims 5 with Dragon Age truly I do think it's kind of in a class of its own um, and that you can kind of use some of the reasoning I've used with other things to kind of back up why we maybe should see it but again I really do think Dragon Age is kind of all on its own so let me explain the kind of where I'm thinking you know Dragon Age stands right now and if we'll see it or not so I, I'm hoping that Dragon Age 4 is fine, okay? I'm hoping that this game is going okay. And obviously, the game has been being worked on for a while, okay? It's been actually quite a while since they started working on it. But this is a game that's going to take an extremely, extremely long time. I don't expect this game for probably two years at the minimum, okay? I really do think that, if, and even if you plan out EA's big games, you got to imagine the fall of next year is probably Battlefield 6, right? And so maybe you think, okay, well, Dragon Age, 4, uh, Dragon Age Inquisition, that worked really well in the fall, in, in that period that it came out okay so you probably shoot for the same uh, kind of thing in the fall of 2022 so that's when I personally think we'll end up getting it and again that's maybe at the earliest I mean I want it as soon as possible but ultimately I don't want them to rush it so I think that's kind of where we're working with and the only reason I say that is because well you got to kind of project where you think the game is going to release in order to say okay well would they talk about it now two and a half years earlier at an at their event okay with Dragon Age though like I've said I think they have to strike a balance if they actually want us to be focusing on it. So again, you have all these properties and a game like Battlefield, a game like Sims, we talked about Sims, right? They're very big in their own ways and they're games that, well, although they may be a little while out, you wonder if EA is going to point at them to kind of say, hey, we got games that are coming out soon, but also here's some games that we know you guys like want. You know also that we're making them. And that's another thing that Dragon Age does have in common, right? Uh, Dragon Dragon Age 4, like, we know it's happening. We even technically got that teaser. Uh, same thing, I mean, Battlefield, we know it's working on. Everybody kind of knows it, uh, but it's not been, like, officially said out loud to the public, like, at a convention. Same thing with Sims, Sims 5. We know they're working on a Sims 5, but it's not, like, hugely public knowledge. Dragon Age is actually higher than both of them, and you can, again, even go back to that saying, well, why would they have done that 
was I think that was two years ago at the Game Awards, right? Why would they have done that then, so far ago, uh, to tease a game that really is just so far away? And even, I believe, when it was shown at the Game Awards, the talk around it was they literally just started. Like, that was very, like, they literally just started working on Dragon Age 4, so, like, don't expect it for an insanely, and I believe, actually, back then, people were saying four or five years, an insanely, insanely long time. You got to wonder if that principle carries over to right now, where, again, just like Battlefield and Sims, it's like, well, it's a game that's not coming out for a while, but we, but also with next gen, you want and you have the opportunity to talk about games that are coming out a long time, you know, a long way away, right? But you have that opportunity, I think, with next gen, everybody kind of gets a little bit of slack. And I've talked about it numerous times in all these different uh, conversations. Something like Warner Bros. Warner Bros. likes to announce their game and then they release it shortly after. I even think Warner Bros. is going to kind of break that trend, and we know that they actually will with Batman, with Harry Potter, with the Rock City game. Not all those games are releasing within half a year. Of of them being announced but because of next gen we get the opportunity where these developers these publishers are going to say hey look at what we got coming like look at how we're going to take advantage of next gen right i think that applies to a lot we know sony we know nintendo we know microsoft they generally do that they announce games that are very very far far off because you're buying their system you need they need to show you to buy it right now here's what you know you're going to get and also here's another reason why you should buy it because you're going to get these games down the line so normally they do do that and and most of the time I there I got again there are examples from different publisher different publisher they all have examples but some games are chosen to announce and then release shortly after some are kind of longer term projects but again they're to get that game in your head so you just know that it's coming you know what I mean I mean we all know a Dragon Age 4 is coming and I honestly I think that's a good thing I think even from a Bioware point of view it helps them because it's like all right say what you want about Anthem and people have said a lot of things say what you want about Andromeda and people have said a lot of things but at least we know, like very clearly, because they've told us and they've shown us, they're working on a new Dragon Age. So that, in a way, you know what I mean, it does get us excited. So when looking at EA this year, what do they do? Again, where's the balance? Do they come out and they just say, all right, I mean, it's next gen. Let's show you everything we got. Some of these are years down the line. Again, like here's an example of a game that's two and a half years away. With Dra I'm obviously not going to say that, but there's Dragon Age. There's Battlefield. That's not it for uh, coming out for another year and a half. Uh, here's, again, like Sims 5. Here's, uh, here's Mass Effect Remaster, which is coming out soon. Here's our sports games, which are coming out soon. You know what I mean? Where do they strike the balance with what? happened around the world and them having to do an online show right not going to you know they technically pulled out of e3 and they've done it they've done that ea play basically like down the block from e3 right so they're pretty much doing that the same thing but just online but i mean you can argue like what has that done to them were they planning on showing a lot of different things and now they kind of have to scale back because uh, of the situation i mean that's very possible in fact i would say that may even be likely with a lot of these publishers that maybe they do have to scale back because you know the more games they announce the more you have to put together these trailers or these presentations or these developers talking over something, right? I think of any, you know, different, like, kind of a view that we've gotten on a game before at an E3 at any kind of convention. You got the trailer. You got a teaser trailer. You got when the developer is playing the game, like, it's kind of already, like, pre-done and they're talking over, right? There's a lot of different ways of showing your games. I mean, that all takes work. And the more you, the more games you have, the more work that takes. And, again, some of these games are much further along than others. And, again, Again, everybody separates. Some people are working from home. I don't even know if people have, have gone back to the offices yet of these game development studios. I assume they're starting to, but obviously they're not all there yet. So it's, it's going to be really interesting. I would say, you know, it, it's weird because actually in the Sims video, I said if you asked me between Sims and Battlefield, which one do I think is more likely to be shown at this thing? I said Sims. And a very again, that's very strange. That's just my prediction. But I think Sims has just a different thing to it where I think it fits. Again, Dragon Age is very very different than both of them uh, and and similar I mean again you can there's similarities and differences it's it's a huge thing, and again, they have kind of behind it the we need to still push it into people's heads so they know it's coming, so they know to be excited, and I think that it's a little bit different in that way than Sims and Battlefield, right? So I feel like Dragon Age is kind of important that, here, basically where I stand on it is I feel like, in a weird way, Dragon Age is more important 
to show at this thing than either of Sims or Battlefield. And again, a weird way, mainly because of all the stuff talked about with BioWare, all the worries about Dragon Age, and also not seeing it for a while. Nobody really knows where the development process is. So all that, right, to kind of like uh, simmer down the worry we have of the game. At the same time, you have that. So that that's something that, that pushes it above, but it's also the furthest away. So is it by default because of that? Is it like the least important? You know what I mean? So so I think it's got the most worry behind it. It's got the most reason to push it in your face to show you that it's okay and it's still coming. But at the same time, it maybe is the last thing on their their you know their list because all these other games are closer and they want to focus on those first. You know what I mean? So it's very it's very difficult to predict. I think if you I, I want it there, I want to see it again. I don't see how we would see anything again but a teaser. And at this point, it's like well we already have a teaser. So if they re-show us Dragon Age Four. What, what would we want? I think we'd probably want more than, you know what I mean? Like, would we want two teasers in a row? I would feel like maybe the next time they show Dragon Age, they would probably want to go all in. Show, like, a full trailer, let's say, and then even like, and then after that, then focus on gameplay and stuff like that. So if you're really, if you're forcing me to answer this question, which which I'm going to assume a lot of people are, I will say that my personal prediction is no. I'm not going and I, no, we're not going to see it. My expectation going into Thursday is that Dragon Age 4 will not be there. And you know what? Firstly, I've been wrong before. And secondly, if it does end up being there, I'm going to be very, very excited. It's actually going to be a really awesome thing. So I'm hoping for it. But at the same time, I'm not expecting it just so my expect, you know, just so I don't let myself down basically. So, guys, let me know in the comments below. What do you think? Do you think Dragon Age 4 is going to appear at EA Play this upcoming Thursday? Do you think it's still got a while uh, left? What do you think they would show? All those things, let me know in the comments below. As always, make sure you guys are subscribed. Have that bell icon turned on. Like I said, the Discord server will be in the description below, too, if you guys want to check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the next video.